Hey guys, what's up? It's Luke slash Bombshoe, and I thought I'd make a video about the King of the Skill construction high scores and my opinions on it. So right now you can see that I'm ranked 2, and I was ranked 1 until about 2 days till the end, and I've um, obviously been passed by this guy. Now this guy obviously cheated, I mean, I that's pretty much like the TLDR for this, but um, I'll, I'll go into all the numbers afterwards and all of the, the research I've done, but I, I've tried to email Jagex, I've tried to talk to the JMods through Twitter, I, I tried to email them through the tip-off email, not just like email them privately, but the one they they put on the forum post email if you thought someone was cheating. Um, I've tried messaging lots of people about this issue, and I tried posting on Reddit, and people just think that I'm like lying, I don't know, like it's like a 50-50, like people just think I'm like on a witch hunt, on a witch hunt after this guy, but... I thought I'd show some clips to kind of prove that what he did was not legit and that um, I have a like a boatload of math that I've done to also prove that his stats just don't really add up with what he would have to do to to get the amount of gold he would have needed to do the methods that he did but anyways let's get into it <clears throat> so on screen right now you're gonna see a long pace spin that I wrote up and this is just explaining step by step what he would have had to do to make the money and to train construction. And I don't know exactly what order he did these things in, but it's you can kind of assume things based on he needs the money to train construction, he needs to do magic before he does Puro Puro, and he needs to do Hunter before he can go to Puro Puro. And one way you can exactly tell what he did is that every person on the high scores for construction has 28 farming from the Zaya favor to get the rune axe so you can tell that he got level 28 farming to get a rune axe from the woodcutting guild so i'm going to talk about step one and step two first and step one was that he would have gone to the stronghold done the museum and then he would have done about two and a half hours of hunter training from level 27 to 74 and this unlocks ninja imps and then for step two he would have had to get level 55 magic and level 50 is required for the bind spell and level 55 is required for high elk but besides that point that I wanted to bring up, let's go into some of the numbers. And I gave him nine and a half hours of time for doing Pura Pura. This would give him about 24 hours if you were to add everything up in here. But um, he would have needed to make a 3.342 mil for the plank cost, which is making the planks, and then 630k for um, for making the planks with butler cost. So this means he would have been cutting oaks outside of Remington, going in the portal giving the planks to the butler and then every eight actions you have to pay him 10k so he need about 630 actions or 63 actions which would add up to 63k or 630k and then um on his magic level i kind of lowballed it right here and you'll see some other math down at the bottom but i i gave him about 150k that he would need in nature runes for his magic level of 55 to 68 and then um his grand total would be about 4.1 mil in nine hours and 30 minutes, you have to make 433K per hour or 7.2K a minute. And this is hunting magpies and uh, ninja imps. So you can see right here that I put Pure Pure is only coming out to around 150K an hour on average. And that's looking at the normal servers where there's bots and a lot going on. But what I do have to point out is that he only has one agility and he has four strength, meaning he, he couldn't run around the place he couldn't scout for imps but there are areas where you can walk back and forth without pushing any wheat but still he would have to you know if every you know five imps he had to push wheat that would still add up to like uh it's like something like 200 wheat pushes he would need not including moving back so like 400 wheat pushes he would need but anyways beside that point of why his strength xp is so low compared to how many times he would have had to push wheat Let's move into the next part of my math, which is kind of explaining, um, based on his magic level, why a lot of things don't add up. So on screen right now, you're going to see I have a lot of numbers for the magpie imps and the ninja imps, and then I have his high score page up, and that's because if you were to subtract this number from the XP you get at level 55, he would only have around 475k magic XP to work with. And this looks like a big number, but if you look at the fact that it's times 10 experience and for every magpie he'd have to catch would take three elks and one bind, this would be about five nature runes per imp. And I got pretty generous and I moved it down to four natures because, you know, every once in a while he's going to get a rune chain body or whatever the 
what is it, uh, rune claws or whatever magpies give. So it would average out to about 4.5 alks per, but I, I rounded down. So if you look at this number, this is how much XP he would get per imp that he caught in magic. So this would only give him 211 imps of room and he would have to average 8,644 GP per open the entire time. And he would need 5,671 GP per open. And um, it, it just, he's about 3K short per imp. So I did the math for level 65 hunter to level 74 on magpies, and this would come out to about 2,353 magpies or 7. 3.73 magpies every minute and I didn't really want to go further into the math because it shows that it's completely impossible to catch this many magpies through scouting. So next I did the math on the ninja imps and this one makes a little bit more sense and that's that I use the same number for magic and he would have only been using 0.5 of a nature rune every every ninja and about two natures on the binds which would only give him 625 magic xp. And he would need about 19 or 1,902 uh, nature runes, costing 342k. And this would end up with each imp being to be about 7,087 GP, which is not completely unobtainable. So you can see between level 74 and 77, he has 388,000 XP to work with in Hunter. And at 500 XP per imp, he would have a max of catching 776 imps. And with 1 in 10 jars breaking, he would have. 853.6 jars or 25.8 jar gener generators you would have to use. So next you'd have to catch 1.23 ninjas every minute which comes out to like I don't know like every 25 like 30 seconds you would, you would have to catch an imp which is just not possible. And also he gets a lot of rune items that he can't elk which I added into the price factor here. So if he wanted to get the full amount of money that would make each imp come out to about 7,000 GP per, he would have to go to a shop in Paul Vinich and sell all these items five at a time, hop, and keep doing this. And this would change the time that he would have to catch an imp to about 1.5 per minute, which would make it even more unobtainable. So I made a small conclusion here, and it's not completely sound, I apologize, but this is because doing the numbers for all this would get even crazier and would take me like two paragraphs to write up, but I'm just going to explain it, and that's that if he were to catch both magpies and ninjas to get this money, um, he would spend less time scouting because he wouldn't be looking for one imp alone, but this would also mean that he has to make more money for the nature runes to catch the magpies and it would take um, even more imps every minute to catch because the magpies only give about 5 point, was it, like 5.6k per catch. So he would need to average about 6.3k per catch between both of them alone. And this would be about 1.3 imps every minute, not including the amount of time he would spend in Paul of Nietzsche, which would, would go up to about 1.6 imps every minute, which is even less, un, less obtainable. And this is where I believe the numbers just don't add up. Without a scout looking for imps, you couldn't log in, look around, and log out fast enough to catch one imp every 30 seconds. You would need to be logging in every single time, knowing there's an imp there, stunning it and catching it and logging out instantly for these numbers to add up. And that is why I believe that the money side of his account is just not possible. So next up, we're going to go into the three tick woodcutting, which I have right here. And this one's going to take a little bit to explain, but bear with me. This is a lot of numbers, but the method that he did to get his planks is obvious because he trained his woodcutting before he trained his construction, meaning his final woodcutting XP right here at 4972 was there before this number was there, or they weren't moving up in, they weren't moving up together, meaning he already had his planks made. And this is important because it means he used even more gold using his butler to unnotice planks. So you can see I did the math here and that if you were to do a three tick cycle, which means every log would take about 0.6 seconds, uh, 24 logs would take 45 seconds of time to cut, 
with a three tick cycle and then it would take approximately 15 seconds to run from the oak trees go into the house talk to the butler he makes the planks and then you just instantly leave because he'll send them straight to the bank and then getting back to the tree anyways that take about 15 seconds in total this would bring his total lap time to about a minute for every 24 planks which would come out to about 1440 planks per hour and how I got the number 24 in his inventory is that he has one slot for his axe, one slot for the GP, one slot for the Kevit Claw, and one slot for the leather band braces. And if he were to be cutting a log at 10x XP, it would be about 375 XP, coming out to a total of max of about 13,258 planks. So now I'm going to talk about how much GP he would spend per plank that he made. And this is factoring that every eight inventories, which is every 192 planks, he would be paying 10k to the butler, bring his average price of plank making up to 258.03 GP, but I rounded down to 252 GP, which would cost him, um, where is it? It's like 3.342 mil in planks, just making them. And this would come out to about nine hours and 15 minutes. And this is considering everything went perfect. This is considering that you know, he didn't make um, a Kevit Claw or a Spiky Van Brace. This is considering that he's not waiting for oak trees to spawn and he's hopping between worlds. But anyways, let's move on to the next one, which is him going to Zaya, which would be before this step, but I added this afterwards because I was talking to Solo Mission about this and it's confirmed that everyone with 28 farming made the compost on Zaya to get into the woodcutting guild to buy rune axe. And this would take about approximately 30 minutes in time. I don't know exactly how much. Uh, Solo Mission said about an hour, but I'm gonna round down just to be generous here. So next up, we're gonna be talking about construction. And if he were to use his two 5,000 experience lamps from Zaya, he would get level 28 construction. So from level 28 to 33, he would have used um, oak kitchen tables or oak chairs really fast and then from level 33 to 50 he'd probably make oak larders using the house teleport and then teleporting to Varrock or something something fast to unlock the demon butler but from level 33 to 74 he'd be using about 5880 planks an hour um, and then from level 74 to 93 he'd be making oak dungeon doors at about 7350 hours or 7350 planks per hour and this would come out to a total of 13,230 planks total and if you were to look at this number right here which is 13,258 planks this adds up to approximately two hours of him training construction unnoting his planks with the butler. Now what's important about him unnoting his planks with the butler is that it would cost him an extra 630k in butler cost which would add up more time that he'd need to be at Pura Pura but I already factored this into the math. And say if he were to unnote his planks at Remington outside with the guy in the general store, this would greatly lower his XP per hour, so this wouldn't be a viable way for him to save 630k. The first part of step 5, which is, um, I wasn't sure about the bag plants or getting a rune axe, but now we're certain that he got a rune axe, and I already added the 30 minutes of time, so we don't really need to talk about that. But um, I already talked about this point briefly, but his woodcutting would need to be near perfect and the three tick supplies, he'd only have about two or three attempts with that. And also um, the Puro Puro, I already explained this, but I didn't want to go into the math of Hunter, but I thought I would briefly explain the averages of why um, the numbers were so, um, were so unachievable based on all of this down here. So last off, I wanted to show my stats on the screen compared to his, and you can see that I'm not really that far away from him. And it really just shows that if he wanted to, he could have gone further with this, like based on the money that he made, he could have gotten to, you know, eight, nine mil um, hunting ips the way he did. It's just infinite money. But I'll show my stats right now. And obviously a lot of people think this isn't legit because I did the Shades of Morton minigame, but I'm going to link an entire video in the description showing how I set it up how you can do it without an alt, showing the entire temple building and the kills without the use of an alt. But um, I just want to say I spent 150 hours on my skill and I'm really upset that someone who obviously cheated was able to take the rank one and they're reaping all the rewards of year long member or lifetime membership, another year membership, the OS buddy, or it wasn't OS buddy, the uh, old school goodie bag and the um what's the last one the artwork they're you know they're reaping the the rewards of a competition 
and they they cheated and to put some other names out there quickly um one i think i don't know if this guy cheated but he called me out on twitter which kind of annoyed me or not twitter on reddit saying that i obviously cheated to get my flam tar bag and to do the method and i think that's a little that's wrong considering he doesn't really know what i did he just kind of assumed things and then as for fletching um this guy there's pictures of him cheating and then for the, all the combats and the magic, all the people have seen those people using um, alts to scout out gangsters and then they would quickly log in and kill them. And then these people used the Zaya um, library to get books, so they just had alts scouting books for them. And I believe um, for fire making, this guy, he just logged in and got the final XP for the kill and then logged out. <clears throat> so. Um, to this, I hope Jagex really bans all these people because they did post something about by the 14th or sooner they're going to release all the winners. And I really want to see all these people taken off the high scores and that next time they really do um, take this seriously if they're going to be offering this many rewards for winning a skill and people like me who put, you know, 100 and 150 hours into this competition didn't, lo didn't come in to lose to someone who's cheating and for Jagex to do little to nothing to actually vet these kinds of people. But anyways, um, this is going to wrap up the video. Thanks for, for sticking around. I know it was a lot of numbers and a lot of math, but hopefully it's changed your opinion. If you thought that he did it all legit, that um, this guy most likely, uh, little guy hacks, um, indeed used a scout to get all of his money to get the amount of XP that he has in construction.